Okay, what we have here is find the last index of an element in a sorted array with duplicates. So here's a sample array which I jacked from a Code Challenge website page, supposedly used in interviews by some of the top companies. Ideally, this array would be variable and you wouldn't know what to expect when it was given to you as input, but for the sake of simplicity, I decided to go ahead and use the same simple hard-coded array so that it was easy to reference. So if we take a second to look at this array, we can think about it. We need to find the very last element, so in this case, the number is going to be 5 that we need to select. So we need to find this last 5 and give the index value for it. And in Java and a lot of programming languages, um, of course, the indexes start at zero. So zero is in the zero index. This would be the first index. This would be the second index, third index, fourth index, fifth index, sixth index, seventh index, eighth index, for a total of nine elements in this array. So we could start out with the simplest approach, just the most generic approach not try and get fancy. We'll just go straight through the array and we'll find that 5. But what's going to happen is that first 5 would match if we were just to say, hey, let's find 5. And uh, then the loop or the algorithm would probably bail after that. And that's not what we want. We want to find the very last 5. So we're basically going to need to have a, a temporary variable that tests if each time, if each single element is a 5 or not. So we'll create an integer and we'll just call it index to hold that index value that might be 5. And for now we'll just set it to 0. But you're going to see that's a bad idea in just a minute. And so since we have a finite number of values, the length of whatever array is given, we'll go ahead and use a for loop. 4 and we'll uh, initialize an iterator and we're starting at the zeroth element and we'll want to iterate while we're less than the length of the array and each time through we'll increment by one okay so through each iteration we need to test if the array element that we're currently iterating over compares to 5. Then we'll go ahead and set our current index value to that, uh, the same index that the iterator happens to be over. So as we go through, it will go through not 5, not 5, not 5, and then it will get here and it will be like, okay, 5, and then it will store that in this index. But then when it gets to the next one, it will see it's a 5, and so it will store that index value there. And then when it gets to this seventh element, it will store that one there. And of course, it won't do anything for the 8, and it will just fall through. So then when it's all said and done, we'll want to go ahead and print that out. the last index that was saved. Okay, let's save that. Jump over here, go ahead and compile it. Last duplicate, that should be it. All right, seven. That's what we were wanting to see there. So this works, but it has to go through the entire array every time. So the best case scenario is the same as the worst case. Um, and we're also creating this temporary variable, which is a negligible little space usage, but it's there, so it's not quite ideal. So what would be the next most optimal solution is what we should probably ask ourselves at this point. And the next most opt 
optimal solution if you think about it you want to find that last value you don't care about any of the fives before that last one so just in case you haven't noticed it or didn't notice it right off the best thing to do might be to start at the end of the array and work our way back and then once we find that value which happens to be five in this case then we'll stop and we know that's the last five so let's go ahead and try the next most optimal solution so now we don't need a variable we're just going to iterate through the array backwards we'll only need the the iterator in the for loop so we'll do an int i equals zero oh excuse me it will need to be the length of the array we're going to because we're starting at the end and we'll want to subtract one because the length of the array will give us uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we want to go to that eighth one. And as long as we're greater than or equal to the zero, element, the zeroth element, then we'll go ahead and um, decrement i by one. And each time we go through this, each time we iterate, we want to test if the current element. compares to our number then we want to go ahead and print we'll know this is the right one because we're coming from the back end towards the beginning so we can just go ahead and print it and bail so you can already probably imagine how much more efficient that might be and then We'll just use the return statement to jump out of there. So we'll come in, start at the length of the array minus one, which will start us on this element. We'll test if it's five, we'll get a no. Then we'll decrement i by one, we'll end up at the seventh element. Test if it's five, it's true, we'll print it and we'll bail. Let's go ahead and run that one. I named this one optimal just to separate it. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the most optimal solution. And there we go, index seven, that's just what we wanted. So this one, even if we changed it to nine here, which is not in our array, save it, jump back. you can see it just falls through it doesn't print anything because that 9 wasn't there but if we jump back to the first example and we change it to 9 we're gonna run into a problem As you can see, it printed index 0, but index 0 is not a 9. So what we need to do is change this and initialize it to like a negative 1. And what that will do is that will let us know that um, if we never find our number, that will remain at a negative 1, which there is no negative 1 element in array. So we'll jump back over. And there you can see. So we just have to keep note that that's what negative one means. Another slight downfall to that first example. The next one, in my opinion, is a little cleaner where it just drops out. We could have it say like um, that it wasn't in the array. So basically, like down here, we could do system dot out dot. C value not in the array. So it's a little bit cleaner, a little bit more optimal of a solution there.
but we can also one thing to do is always check maybe if your programming language supplies some type of built-in construct or some way to do things a little more cleaner and efficiently and Java happens to provide a binary search built into arrays if your language platform doesn't have that binary search built in you can always build one yourself that's a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm demonstrating right here but I'm gonna go ahead and show an example of this so a binary search is gonna go through and basically split this in half and then it's gonna check at whatever value that it picks at the halfway point it's gonna say hey is that is that less than or equal to our number and it's gonna decide which half to throw away based on that so if it picks four then it will say hey four is less so we know this is sorted that's one thing with a binary search it assumes that the list is sorted so it's gonna throw away this left half over here and then it's gonna go this direction with it so one thing to do is just start with something like this is to maybe just start kinda of coding it out instead of like thinking of the grand solution so knowing that we need to call on the java util arrays binary search um, API function we'll go ahead and do that and what it will do is it will return an integer with the uh, location if that number we choose happens to be in there and otherwise like our first example it will give us a negative value otherwise so we'll go ahead and get that ready and of course this could be imported to avoid typing such a long statement and we're going to give it the number 5 to search for and that will basically that will there's no guarantee with the Java implementation which 5 it will return so what we need to do is we need to check um, first of all we need to check and make sure that the index is greater than zero. So we'll say if the index is less than zero, then we want to bail because then we know it wasn't in there at all. So we'll go ahead and do that, get that out of the way. And then while while our index value that it does return basically so if it gives us this 5 right here in the middle then we want to check the next one and if it's a 5 then we want to check the next one and if it's not a 5 then we want to say okay this is obviously the value we're going for so we're gonna say if the returned the found 5 the found element if the next element to it compares to that element then we need to go ahead and keep going. We haven't found the last one. Oops. So then we'll do an index plus plus to increment it, and that will go back through that loop. So let's just say for the sake of the argument that it starts at this five. Then it's going to say, okay, that five's index here. And then what's index plus one? That's this one. That's the value here. That's a five. So it's going to go index plus plus, and it's going to land right here and then it's going to say hey does index plus one oops I just noticed I, f I always do this I forget to wrap the indexes so if you run into a problem that's if you're like me that's what it is and then of course it will finally uh, land on this one and it will test and that one's not that so it won't go through an increment index at that point it will just bounce out so we'll go down to our next statement line and index should be lined up on the value that we're expecting so we'll go ahead and print that out and of course we're not wrapping it with the array syntax because um, we just want to know that the index value we don't want to we already know we're searching for the five save that jump over
supposed to. I didn't save this with a Java extension. go index 7 so we catch the case where it's not in the array and this one just falls through if it's not in the array and this one of course returns negative 1 if it's not in the array so once again going back through it quickly this one has the temporary variable it does a the best case is worst case. It goes through every single. It's an O, a big O of n um, linear time. It's going to go through every single element, beginning to end, no matter what. And then we're going to get like a weird negative number. Um, this one is going to start at the end, and it's going to work its way back. The worst case in this one is still O of n because this zero, if that was a five or if say we search for a zero then it's gonna have to go all the way back through each one to get that but the positive out of it is that you know the first time you hit the number you want since the array sorted that that's what you're looking for and then with the binary search version your this would be very a better choice than the others for a very large input because it's gonna quickly dissect and break it down and just a few steps and it's going to hone in on that area where the value you want is and then it's going to start checking the next value to make sure it's at the last one. So that's that and that's how you find the last index of an element in a sorted array with duplicates.